The tents are gone, but the movement continues. This is day 61 of Occupy Los Angeles, and you're watching Inside Out News. California, a man all their assembled at City Hall, South Lawn, to immediately disperse, which means to break up this assembly. If you do not do so, you may be arrested or subject to other police action. Other police action may include the use of less lethal munitions, which can cause significant risk of serious injury to those who remain. Section 409 of the penal code prohibits remaining present at an unlawful assembly. If you remain in the area which was just described, regardless of your purpose in remaining, you will be in violation of Section 409. Early Wednesday morning, the Los Angeles Police Department mobilized to finally remove the protesters from the lawn surrounding City Hall in downtown Los Angeles, two days after the 12.01 a.m. deadline on Monday morning. Late Sunday night, the LAPD mobilized a large-scale show of force in anticipation of a large gathering in support of Occupy LA. Thousands of people came out in support of the occupation, eventually spilling over into the streets. After hours of being in the streets on the south side of City Hall, the police pushed the mostly peaceful protesters back onto the sidewalk, arresting four. Chief Beck has said to me repeatedly in recent days that although the park will be closed officially for res uh, for uh, uh, reconstruction, yes. people, for, uh, for, renovation. Renovation, renovation. Okay, for renovations as of 12.01 uh, this morning, that there will be no arrests starting then, and in fact, uh, more than adequate time was the words that he used for people to decide what they wish to do, for people to gather up their belongings and leave if that's what they wish to do. <laughs> At one point, I was assured uh, that there would be as much as 72 hours. Later, I was told, that, well, we never like to commit to an exact amount of time, but we're not the, uh, again, I'm quoting the chief of police, we are not the Oakland Police Department, we are not the New York Police Department, we don't intend to come into the stealth of the night. We don't intend to use tear gas, we don't intend to use baton. The protesters were ultimately allowed to stay in the park overnight, but the question remained, for how long? They began preparation Tuesday afternoon, first tipping off the media with an advisory stating that media vans could no longer park along the perimeter of City Hall. From there, they began staging at Dodger Stadium four miles away. In the meantime, we walked around City Hall to see who was left after the six-hour standoff early Monday morning. Over a hundred tents remained, but the effect of the show of force by the LAPD had done its job. Those who remained on the lawn during the day were not the usual organizers we had seen in the weeks before. There were many homeless still on the ground. The Skid Row tribe stretch on the west side of City Hall was still intact. I recognized some of the faces as belonging to people who had been pointed out to me by occupiers as being some of the less stable, less mainstream members of the occupation. With growing hits, hints of the eviction coming around, we asked those who remained what they planned to do. In the beginning, the cops, the city, the mayor, everybody uh, supported us. We were always supported. To a couple, three weeks ago. All of a sudden, we're in an unlawful, an unlawful assembly, quote unquote. Seriously, if you just scooch it over and then um, really set up right afterwards. Thank you so, so much. if we're in an unlawful assembly, how come we have a permit? It's a festival permit. This is like Woodstock or something, or Rainbow Gathering. It's a festy permit that runs out in February. And you consider this a festival? Yeah. It's not a protest. It's a protest. It's still fun. There's music and there's drugs. There's hippies. It's a festival. Are you concerned about the police coming in and moving you guys out possibly no, no, tonight? I'm not. I'm not concerned at all. Why? Because the police just want to talk to us. A lot of the police have low page wages and all their taxes are being uh, sucked and destroyed and all that other stuff. Hold on, Jeff. Um, I think the cops really want to talk with us and I don't think they want to block up the streets and block traffic and then be on video for uh, hitting people and destroying tents and destroying property. I don't think the cops want to go through all that. That's why they didn't touch the property uh, the other night. 
Joseph, are you concerned about a possible eviction or raid happening tonight? Um, yeah, I don't want it to happen. You know, this has been turned into a pretty nice community. You know, I, I've enjoyed meeting a lot of the people and uh, getting that the feeling of a sense of community back. Which I feel like a lot of times has is, is missing, you know. Um, when you can just close the door on people and just not have to deal with them here, we've all had to uh, live together, eat together. I mean, it, we, we've just been living here, and you know, when when problems have arise, we've had to deal with it, not necessarily be able to just shut it out. Just kind of, uh, what will you do if the police come? Not really sure. I mean, I've got my stuff more or less packed and ready. I don't like, I don't want to get, you know, tear gassed or any of that. I would prefer to avoid that if possible. Um, I'd rather just do my best to maintain my dignity and composure, walk out with my bag on my back and just leave. A young man named Shane had built a tree house in the palm trees during the police action early Monday morning. He talked to us a bit about his motivations for being a part of the movement. If the police came uh, and said, you need to come down, if you don't come down, we'll come up and get you, Are you is that what you're, you're, you're planning to do? Well, um, well, I'd probably say, are you asking me to come down or are you... So if they say, we're asking you to come down? Well, if they're asking me, then um, I, I, I'd probably, well, it depends. If I feel like coming down, I'll, I'll come down. But if I don't, I, I'll, I'll be up here. So I don't know where this is going to go. And like I said, I have nothing against authority. And, uh, you know, but I'm a human being. And I, 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 and we're all people, people. We're all people. This is a sovereign nation, and I'm a sovereign. What does that mean to be a sovereign nation and to be a sovereign? Well, it, it means that uh, I am my own king, yeah? I'm my own king, and so are you. So, uh, so is everybody. And, you know, it, it's about recognizing that it's about recognizing that you have the power uh it's a god-given right um of every person in the world and i i don't see any boundaries i don't see any uh lines being drawn in the sand we're all you know we, let's respect one another and i do but at the same time respect me and you know i wish no no harm to anyone Later on during the eviction, Shane was still up in the treehouse. We could not confirm his fate that early morning, but we believe that he and the rest of the occupiers in the treehouse were part of the 200 arrestees. The 1,400-membered police force began making their way to City Hall in the late evening, driving trucks and black vehicles into the parking structure underneath the adjacent courthouse, where the Conrad Murray sentencing had occurred just that morning. Helicopters flew overhead and there were rumors, which were later confirmed by a photo that was shown to me, which we have on screen for you now, that Homeland Security was involved. We still do not know the reason for Homeland Security's involvement. By 8, PM, 8, by 8 p.m., the no man land of the afternoon had transformed into one to the once occupation that has existed there for the past two months. It appeared that all of the main organizers had returned and with backup. There were at least 500 protesters inside the courtyard on the south side of City Hall. On Sunday night, we spoke with a consultant from the Densis Group, an international crowd and protester management consulting firm, about what tactics kind of tactics we could expect from the police as they moved in to clear out the protesters. What we can hope for, given Chief Beck's approach thus far, is a very cooperative approach to, to evicting people from the park. Uh, the best scenario that we could hope for is that you'll actually see a lead by uniformed officers trying to move people out of the park, and for those who seek to, to, to be resistant, who want to be arrested, and are either non-compliant, non-violent or violent, is that um, the tactical squads will move in and seek to, uh, to arrest those people and move them off. 
for those who are being violent, the trick for the police department will be to identify them, secure them, arrest them, um, and eventually prosecute them, but in a way that only targets those people and doesn't cause the police to overreact and take out the pressure by a few on the many. Now, in other occupations where we've seen evictions, they have arrested people who were nonviolent. They've used tear gas or bullets on nonviolent people. What would be different here, and, and why would this be an exception to the rule and what we've seen in regards to the use of, of strong force against nonviolent protesters? There's no guarantee that we won't see some of those tactics. Um, however, we can aspire, given um, the way that Chief Beck has run the operation so far, that actually things will be kept a lot lower key. There's a growing movement in the US that the use of tear gas in this kind of situation of rubber bullets um, is unwise. I would go further, I'd say they're almost um, unjustifiable. You're not going to achieve, through the use of tear gas, a specific effect on a specific person and similarly, the indiscriminate use of rubber bullets really isn't compliant with anything like due process or achieving an effect on an individual person uh, for subsequent prosecution. The LAPD created a media poll allowing only three media outlets from print, radio and TV to be allowed beyond police lines once the area was declared an unlawful assembly. Many members of the media were frustrated with the creation of this poll, having only been given a few hours notice to be present at the meeting. The local Fox, ABC, and NBC affiliates were the only TV networks allowed special access. We stayed in the middle of the park for as long as we could, literally up until the last second. There was no tear gas, no rubber bullets used against the protesters, but a certain level of aggression existed. I was grabbed by one of the police officers who was trying to pull me out of the center of the park. A few journalists near me grabbed me, yelling that I was a journalist, successfully pulling me away from the police. There are reports that some protesters were jabbed with batons, pushed down the south stairs. This morning, Mayor Villaraigosa and Police Chief Charlie Beck gave a press conference congratulating themselves for a job well done, overlooking these reports, saying in this morning's press conference, last night we witnessed perhaps one of the finest moments in the history of the Los Angeles Police Department. Ultimately, by 3 a.m., the streets were cleared and the 200 protesters who remained on the lawn in City Hall were arrested. At the November 17th action, the protesters who were arrested were held on bail for no more than $200. The protesters who were arrested during the early morning eviction remain on a $5,000 bail, 25 times more than the amount from November 17th, both for the same charge of unlawful assembly. This morning's press conference and yesterday's eviction actions both showed signs of serious restrictions on the freedom of the press. Only members of the press with LAPD press credentials were allowed into the press conference today. Yesterday, only nine journalists were allowed to cover the arrests. We were not able to get into today's press conference, and so we have many questions left unanswered by Mayor Villaraigosa and Police Chief, Chief Charlie Beck that we would like to ask now. Mr. Mayor, what is the purpose of preventing all members of the media access to your press conference and to your police actions? Why, if you refer to the Los Angeles Police Force as your officers, is it that you have no jurisdiction over who the LAPD lets report and who they do not? Why is it necessary to have four large cops stand in front of the entrance of City Hall, restricting entrance into a publicly owned space at your press conference last week? What was the purpose of Homeland Security's presence at the eviction? Do you consider the occupation movement a threat to the security of this country? What does it mean to conduct constitutional policing? How do you police the Constitution? We want to show all sides of the story, Mr. Mayor, but if we are not allowed to be present when the city meets with members of the press, how can we do our job? 
This ends our extended report on the eviction of Occupy Los Angeles. Look for our next report. This is Margot Pais signing off for Inside Out News. Good night.